It's Thursday, January 14, 2016, and let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the world in a segment that I'm calling That's What I Like. First up, some general news. I saw a video pop up over on YouTube from Luria Petrucci over at Geek's Life, where she announced they'd hit 100,000 subscribers. That is awesome. Congratulations to Luria and the rest of the Geek's Life team. Moving right along, there was an article over on The Verge talking about uh, before CES ends, it turns into a bit of a discount bazaar. And I wanted to talk about this one in particular because I have a little bit of actual experience with that. When I was at CES last year, I was walking along the CES floor looking at things and I stumbled upon a selection of camera sliders. Camera sliders usually ridiculously expensive. These were straight out of China, of course. And this guy standing at a booth completely full of them, all motorized, all five feet long, all seemed to be working really, really well. I asked him how much they were going to be and he said, $100. And I said, what? He said, you come back on Friday, that you can have this one for $100. So apparently before the show ends, there are so many, and this is what this article is about. Before the show ends, there are so many companies that want to get rid of the stuff so they don't have to take it back with them. So if you do happen to go to CES, make sure you stay the whole week. I've never gotten to do that, unfortunately. May never get to. Kind of sucks. I also saw an article pop up about the $99 Kangaroo PC. Made a video earlier this week, and I think I stuck it in a drawer actually, about the Azul Quantum Access PC stick. Make sure to check out that video if you've not seen it already. However, it's about $125, $130 over on Amazon. The Kangaroo PC is apparently $99 and has a slightly faster processor. Other than that, the specs look pretty similar. I think it was two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage and Windows 10. But still, for 99 bucks to be able to get a PC like that, that's not bad. I mean, the little PC stick that I mentioned that I reviewed is not a bad little machine. Moving on though. Story that really caught my attention and almost grabbed my wallet. Livestream, livestream.com, they're a live, they do what they say on the tin. They make live streaming possible, at least for their site. However, they announced at CES that they are making their very first consumer ready camera, the Movi, or Movi, I think it's Movi. Now this thing looks super cool, and like I said, I pulled out my wallet, I literally almost went ahead and pre-ordered it because it is $200 during the pre-order time. It's gonna be $399 retail, but for the time being, during this little limited pre-order run, $200, $199. But the cool thing about it, it's this little teeny tiny camera. You can stick it on a tripod. It's got a couple of accessories you can buy to go along with it, but those are kind of expensive. But the camera itself is 4K camera. It's like a 4K action cam, but using an iOS device, you can control it kind of like you would a PC streaming. But with something like that, you can have all sorts of layouts defined. With this one, with the camera, you get, I think, up to nine different virtual cameras that you can create within the existing 4K camera, going down as small as 720p, you wouldn't really want to do that if you're going to save it, but you can stream it out to livestream.com or you can save it locally to, I think, a micro SD card in the back of the device. Now, I did not see mentioned anywhere in there anything about having a any sort of audio in, so you're stuck using the microphones built into it. They did mention that if you're using an iOS device, think any iOS device, but we're going to say iPhone for now. If you're using an iPhone with it, you can plug some sort of an external audio source into the iPhone, and it's supposed to be able to blend seamlessly between that audio source and what the camera is hearing. And the camera has a little microphone array that will directionally point itself at whatever you point the virtual camera at, which I thought was really cool. Not something I was able to justify, even at $200. It sounds awesome, but I don't, I don't use Livestream.com. I haven't used that one for years and years. There were a couple of Amazon-related stories. Amazon is really, really fighting to get back into the news. Big, big news. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you now get 20% off of all new game releases, as long as you're buying the physical copy. And actually it says the deal extends to things like Nintendo's Amiibo and Lego Dimension toys. So maybe even things like the little Skylanders, anything that's something physical that you're buying when it new, when it first releases, within the first two weeks of release. And it automatically applies it, as long as you're a Prime member. Guess who's a Prime member? For like two more years. And this one's interesting. Amazon Echo users can start playing this classic trivia game. I actually have the Amazon Echo. I did the unboxing, never did their full review for some reason, but they've added in the ability to play Jeopardy with the Echo. I was gonna do a quick thing where I run in there and I do a new show. It's late at night, I can't be bothered right now. But if you have an Amazon Echo, it cuts off in my RSS reader, but I think you say, Alexa, start Jeopardy. Hopefully she didn't hear me. And to go along with all of that, with the Echo and with the Prime and the 20% off, I think Amazon is doing a deal. I, I can't find a link for it at the moment, but there was some sort of a deal. Normally, Amazon Prime is seven or $99. This weekend only, it's $73 if you don't have a Prime membership already. So look into that. I'll put a link down below. Keep in mind, it will be a referral link. So if you do sign up for it, I get a little bit of a kickback. That would be awesome. Moving on, there were a couple of VR stories I wanted to hit on. The HTC Vive pre-orders are going to be available February 29th. But the other thing, the Oculus Rift, we mentioned before that it was going up for pre-order, but the pre-order sold out, I think. However, Dell has announced, 
I think a $200 discount if you buy an Oculus Rift bundled with a Dell machine. But in addition, Dell's Oculus Rift bundles could ship before the pre-orders do, or at the same time at the very least. So if you're in the market for a new PC and you're looking to do Oculus Rift, because I saw somewhere that the creator of the Oculus Rift was basically saying the biggest thing holding you back from VR is not not having the VR headset, it's having a crappy PC. Because you can get the VR headsets. It's your PC is not going to be ready for it. So keep that in mind. Now let's move on to something else that I'm passionate about. As you can see by this shelf up here, drones, quadcopters, Lily's smart camera. It is a Kickstarter project that apparently racked up $34 million in pre-orders. If you're not familiar with that one, it's going to be something where you stick it in a backpack, you're out on the, the trail, you're out hiking or in a canoe or something, you pull it out, you throw it, and it takes off, and it flies, and it takes a selfie of you, and it comes back. Not sure exactly how useful I would find that, especially with the Phantom 3 being so low in price at this point, as I point to it that is up there. Still a really cool little item, and of course I will have shown you a picture of it by now. It's a cute little thing. Moving on, there were lots and lots of transportation-related stories this week, so I thought I would lump all of those together. First up, in a very good news, Obama has said that he wants to spend $4 billion filling up our roads with autonomous vehicles. That's the way that Gizmodo wrote it up. So apparently Obama is putting his confidence behind self-driving cars. And as a person who wants a self-driving car, as a person who hates driving, I can definitely give my thumbs up to that. That's an awful lot of money to throw toward it, but if we ever want to move to self-driving cars, the entire infrastructure is going to have to be upgraded. Speaking of Tesla though, Tesla put out a new firmware update improving their auto steering and adding in remote parking and I think curb pickup. There's just all these little updates coming out that are making it a little bit more smart each time. That's actually one of the reasons why I'm very, very tempted that when the Tesla Model 3 comes out, I may actually pick one up. And actually speaking of Tesla, one of the inventions created by Elon Musk, well, he didn't actually make anything from it, but he, he came up with a design for it, I think. The concept, at least. It's called Hyperloop, and apparently this says the first working Hyperloop could be available by the end of 2016. If I remember correctly, I, again, do not have a full article. I have a little RSS reader. The Hyperloop is effectively a magnetic tube where you have a little cylinder of sorts that sits inside of it, and it can move hugely fast from one place to another, like 800 miles an hour. I would assume this is something that's gonna be happening on the California coastline, and it's gonna go from like one major tech city to another. So I hope that we learn more in the next couple of months, and hopefully that does happen. I mean, that, that could be so useful. In other transportation-related news, a bunch of stuff came out of CES. There were a bunch of, I'm not gonna go into detail on these, but a bunch of electric scooters, smart scooters. There's one from Ginza and Gogoro. There's one from Mahindra. There's a, a little like foldable Razor style scooter from EcoRico. I've seen those mentioned actually on GeekBeat TV when it used to be GeekBeat TV. But I think this is a newer updated model that can go 20 miles per hour. I'm not doing that. I would probably kill myself. But what looked really interesting to me and very tempting is the Arkimoto SRK. It is basically an electric three-wheeled motorcycle with panels all over it so you can make it kind of look like a car. And the pricing on it starts at about $11,900. $11, but for running around town doing deliveries, for running around town getting groceries, picking up a kid, I don't think I'd pick up my kids in that. Still, a really neat concept and something I could definitely see myself getting excited about at less than 12,000 bucks to start. And for the Casey Neistat that is well inside of me, the Inboard M1. I think it's gonna be expensive. I think I remember reading it was like 1,800 bucks, but it is a new electric skateboard. It's more of the form factor of a traditional skateboard instead of the longboard style that boosts boards and the others have done. So very nice to see other companies jumping in. Just wish that they would not make them so ridiculously expensive. But I think we've learned our lesson with when it comes to that as far as the little hoverboard style things. You know, the whole exploding thing. Although mine has not. Mine is over there. Mine is good. Speaking of that, that's a good segue that I didn't mean to do. Swagway is making a new Swagtron hoverboard. It's got Bluetooth built in, Bluetooth speakers, and it apparently will not explode. I didn't read any more of the article than that. That's all I needed to know. There's a new one coming. This thing that I fell in love with that I've used so much inside the house because outdoors is cold. They're making a newer version of it and it's not supposed to explode. And what's more, moving on to science-y related topics, scientists have apparently also developed some concrete that can be used on Mars to build habitats which makes sense. If we go there, we're gonna have to have a way to build things. And traditional Earth-based physics style stuff isn't gonna work quite right in that airless, gravity-changed environment. So very cool that they figured that out. And very, very last, the one that I wanted to close out with, coming at the very end, as it were, freeze-dried poop pills are being tested to try out obesity treatments. As a person that has been obese in the past, and a person that is still a little bit hefty, I will admit, when I first heard about this kind of thing, I think I saw it on Vlogbrothers, it caught my attention. But the idea of taking the poop from somebody that is a thin person and putting the bacteria from it into the gut of somebody that is an overweight person, it's a gross, it's an icky idea. 
But if you're just taking the bacteria, you're not taking the actual boops, maybe, I don't know. I honestly can't say that I would do it myself, but I could see it being a useful, helpful thing to help promote good gut bacteria, good weight losing, metabolism lifting, poopy bacteria in there. And you know what? That is the last thing that I have on my list, the last thing that I wanted to talk about today, and I've been going on for entirely too long. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you are enjoying these videos as much as I am making them. Remember to leave a like down below this video if you like this video, and subscribe to receive more of my videos when they become available. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.